Hello. Today we will be finishing the lecture on the circulatory system, focusing on valves, the vessels within the circulatory system, and blood pressure. Now, the circulatory system has valves to prevent blood from flowing in the wrong direction. The four major valves of the circulatory system within the heart is the tricuspid, which is located between the right atrium and the right ventricle, the pulmonary valve, which is located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary arteries, the mitral, which is located between the left atria and the left ventricle, and the aortic, which is located between the left ventricle and the aorta. Now, if something causes the valves in the heart to be badly damaged, surgery is needed to repair the valves. However, many people have minor damage or abnormal abnormalities to the valve that can be heard through a stethoscope when the doctor listens to the heart. Generally, these minor problems will not create issues that need to be addressed through medication or surgery. This is a view of the heart looking down, cut across the top of the atria, and it shows our four different valves, the tricuspid, aortic, pulmonary, and mitral valves. Notice that the mitral valve has a different shaped flap than the tricuspid valve types that occur in both the tricuspid, the aortic, and the pulmonary valves. Let's, excuse me, let's talk a bit about how our heart beats. The sinoatrial node, referred to as the SA node, is a set of cardiac cells that set the pace for the entire heart to beat. The heart muscle contracts from the bottom by the ventricles up to the top by the atria so that the blood in the heart moves in the correct direction. The first type of blood vessel that we're going to talk about is arteries. Arteries are thick, muscular vessels that carry blood away from the heart. Muscles in the walls of the arteries let them expand under pressure of the blood being pushed from the heart. Most arteries carry oxygen-rich blood. The exception is when they are carrying blood from the heart to the lungs in the pulmonary circulation system. The next type of blood vessels that we're going to talk about are capillaries. Capillaries are tiny blood vessels with very thin walls that connect arteries and veins. The purpose of a capillary is to release oxygen and nutrients to the cells while removing carbon dioxide and waste. The last type of blood vessels is veins. Veins are thin-walled vessels that carry blood to the heart with valves to keep blood flowing in the correct direction. Skeletal muscles help push the blood through the veins back to the heart. Because the skeletal mu muscles play an important part in moving blood back to the heart, sitting still for long periods of time can increase the risk of blood clot in the legs due to blood pooling in those veins. The last topic we're going to talk about today is blood pressure. Blood pressure is a pressure that blood exerts as it flows through the body. There are two different types of blood pressure. Systolic pressure is the pressure when the ventricles force blood into the arteries. A healthy number for systolic pressure is, 200, is 120. Diastolic pressure is the pressure that occurs in the, vein, in, the, excuse me, in the circulatory system when the ventricles are relaxed. A healthy diastolic pressure is around 80. Problems do occur with blood pressure. Low blood pressure is defined as blood pressure that is less than 90 over 60. The good news about low blood pressure is that if you have no symptoms, it's not a problem. Now, low blood pressure can be the sign of a serious medical problem if it comes on after or during an illness or accident. In this case, it means that you're either going into shock or have internal bleeding. A more severe problem is high blood pressure. High blood pressure is a consistent reading of 140 over 90. The danger with high blood pressure is it can cause big problems even if you have no symptoms. Because if you have high blood pressure while you don't have any symptoms, it can be doing permanent damage to your heart, which could cause heart disease, permanent damage to your brain, which could cause a stroke, permanent damage to your kidneys, which would lead to kidney failure, and it has the, the possibility of worsening side effects of diabetes. So what can you do to deal with high blood pressure? It's important to get your blood pressure checked regularly. Encourage your family members to do the same thing because there are many cheap or free um, nutritional and exercise programs that can decrease blood pressure. 
and also many drugs that are quite affordable that can help keep blood pressure down. In doing so, make sure you're following recommendations for exercise and dietary rules. This is the end of today's lecture. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day.